I'm here with Edward Dick at uh, Victor Guitar, and Victor is your middle name, so it's Edward Victor yeah. Dick. Uh, you've just opened up this shop here on um, <clears throat> 1457 South Broadway. We've been open right? for a couple of days. A couple of days. And this is one of the uh, instruments of musical destruction that, you, uh, that you've not only invented, but you you're sound to be an expert player at. Well, I don't know about that, but I do enjoy building them. Yeah. And uh, now it's, it's a banjola. Now, wh why why ban? How, I call it banjo. I get the the ola. Is the well, you know, it felt I felt like it needed a new name. Um, I mean, this was kind of a an, a, an instrument that uh, I had been dreaming about for 20 years before I actually built right. one. Um, I started my life as a banjo player, and uh, but pretty much at the same time, I uh, found myself you know working on guitars. And I, truth be told. It was way more fun working with wood and and you know all the, the you know the beauty of guitars and you know although I still do a lot of work on banjos mm -hmm. when it came down to building I really wanted to build something that was wooden right. and you also build guitars don't and you? I I built over 300 guitars right. um, you know from about 1976 to 2007 mm -hmm. um, uh, actually the first banjola I built I built it in 1996 and. Really, all I was thinking was to make a wooden version of a five-string banjo. And so you'll notice this is kind of similar to the very first one that I ever built. It's got steel strings on it, mm -hmm. and it's tuned exactly like a banjo. It's got a drone string on it. And it's got the high string here. Um, this is tuned to what's called like, like a double drop C tuning, which is kind of an old-timey banjo tuning that I like myself. This works, works and, and especially well for a claw hammer. I was going to say you play a trailing style. If you know how to play the banjo, if you can do that on the banjo, then you're good to go on the banjo. Exactly. I can't play that on the banjo, exactly. so and, I'm not good to go on and, and, and But the point is it has a different tonality oh, to it. It has a very, you know, much more wooden, yeah. I think of it as a more ethereal kind of sound. Right. Uh, not that we want to disparage banjos, because banjos can sound beautiful in the right, right. context. Right. But in my case, I was really looking yeah. for something that was more brought together the sound of a harp and a bazooki well, you and know, a mandolin. It, it, it's sort of, um, there's, there's some dulcimer in there. It sounds like a cross between a dulcimer and, and, uh, and exactly. a banjo. Exactly. In fact, one of the, I actually thought of calling it a banjo, banjolamer or banjo. something like that at first. The banjola got, was really... It's got to fit on a t-shirt. So well, uh, and, and I, it's really, you know, like I was thinking of mandola at the, mm -hmm. at the time. And yeah, okay. it, I felt uh, like it needed banjo. a new name. There you go. And so I used, used mandola because it has a kind of a mandola size and shape right, to it. Right, and, and a mandola, a viola are just larger versions, versions of, of mandolin and violin, exactly. so, which are also tuned the same way as it turns out. So after building that one, I found myself wanting to hear a bigger, richer sound. Yeah. Rather than building a bigger instrument, um, which this one is slightly bigger, I added an extra bass string. So this oh, one has, this. it's tuned exactly the same thing. This is a six string instrument. But now I've added this string here. Right. And, and what note is that? It's a low G. Oh, because you have G, G. This is the yeah. one. Excellent. And, and that was when I realized, when I built this, I realized that was the sound that I really was looking wow. for. Because it has that really that rich low. baritone. And I found myself playing in a much more almost kind of Celtic finger style kind of way. Show us something. Now the question is, how do, I, how do I tell my wife that I want a banjola? Um, well, and then you also have to choose which one you want. Oh, yeah. Because I build, them, I build them in five string, six right. string. I've even built a nine string with double strings. And then one of my more later, latest versions of these, these is a, what I call the petite model. And this was built out of a, a desire to make something that was kind of more ukulele-esque. And so I've shortened the scale length. I've right. put ukulele style strings on it. Notice it's still tuned like a banjo. It's still got the short string. Right. And it's the same kind of tuning. And you can 
claw hammer it again. What kind of are you? Uh, what kind of woods are you using? Are they? Uh, well, in this case, I've, I've made this one from all mahogany mm -hmm. because, again, I was looking for the tonality that you get in a high-quality ukulele. Mm -hmm. And I wanted something that had a lot of crispness to it. Now, are these also metal strings? These are nylon strings. Okay, that's right. Actually, they're called Nile gut strings because they are a modern simulation of um, nylon strings that are made oh. to simulate Got actual right. old style gut strings, right. and some people like these on their old style banjos as well. Right now, so you're you're the inventor. Yes. Right? Um, are there other people who've taken up uh, making banjolas? Or have uh, you, uh, you know, uh, there is a uh, Japanese company which will rename main, nameless <laughs> that has that actually shouldn't say Japanese; it's Chinese. Okay. Uh, that is has borrowed my design. Uh, oh, a borrowed. That's a, um, that's a that's a, a, a gentle <laughs> term. Is there? Patent, pen, patent legislation? Well, I, what, I, I did look at lawsuits and all that kind of thing, and I realized that it was going to cost me way more in, because I would have had to go to federal court. Mm -hmm. um, and the good news is they've popularized the name of the instrument in a way that I never could have, because mm -hmm. they're mass producing them in China. Okay. And so they make a cheaper, less now, expensive version now, of now, the same is thing. Is this for domestic use or for export? I mean, I, I well, only, you almost sound play some oriental stuff on there. Well, you could, like but no, they're, 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 they're sold here in the United right. States. That's what I figured. So, yeah. Well, um, uh, obviously the, the quality uh, um, here is uh, in indisputable. It's a gorgeous instrument. Well, what, what I realized was after, you know, first uh, being a little bit bummed out by the fact that they were, you know, borrowing my design yeah, really. and the name, I thought, well, but they've popularized uh, in the name in such a way that I never could have. Mm -hmm. And there's room for both of us. In other words, I can make a high quality version of the, of the instrument. At the same time, there's a less expensive version that people can right. perhaps introduce well, themselves. Uh, just as there is in all the segments of the guitar exactly. and banjo and, and every other market. Yeah. But um, it's a gorgeous sound. I, uh, I'm, I so which one do you want? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, you know what? I, after um, later on, uh, offline, uh, I'll, I'll pick up one and I'll, I'll see what I. Can Guitar play. players tend to be attracted to the six string. Well, I play the banjo too. Oh, do you? Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, well, yes, I do. I, it's been proven. So anyway, I uh, I'm looking forward to my first banjola lesson. Perhaps we'll have to uh, see what, how it turns out on one of the upcoming episodes. So uh, thanks a lot, Edward, and I hope you enjoyed it. I d I enjoyed it a lot. Thanks. Right. Hi, I'm Robin Rothschild, good friend of Steve's, and um, he's been kind enough to invite me here to be on the show. And um, I guess I'm going to start out with um, this guitar here. This is one of my favorite oldest guitars. It's um, 1961 handmade Velasquez, uh, Spanish-made guitar. It was my second teacher's instrument, and he wanted me to have it. So um, it's got a beautiful sound and um, the song I'm going to play is a song that I wrote and I actually um, won second place at the Winfield Midwest Blues um, Festival a couple summers back. I wrote this song back in the 70s. I started in 1971, 72. Only wrote one verse and then I forgot about it, and then I proceeded to play it for my eldest son, who's also a singer-songwriter. And he said, where'd that one come from? And uh, I said, well, back when you were a little baby. <laughs> and I come back, and he wrote the rest of the song, and we recorded it. <laughs> so um, he actually, I think, does it better than I do, but I'm going to... It's called Reach for the Sky.
Well, I hope you enjoyed watching the show, and um, if you play and you'd like to be on the show, or if you know somebody who might like to be, or if you know of a venue that you uh, think might be a good one for us to come down and shoot, um, why don't you contact us at the email address you see on the screen, and uh, we'd love to uh, have you on.